Dear students, good morning. I am Ajitesh Moyghosh, Assistant Professor of Computer Science and Engineering Department of Adamas University. Today I am going to talk about a topic called Programming and Data Structure. This is very important topic as programming is all about a programming language which can interact uninterruptedly with the computer and data structure is all about storing, retrieving, managing the data within the computer. This is the first lecture of module 1. So let's move on. Today I am going to talk about the topic of one exciting programming language called Python. The first topic I am going to talk about is Python fundamentals. Then I will move on to the next topic compiler and interpreter and the last one is Python as a programming language. Python is a very important programming language for all the students or programmers whoever is trying to learn about any programming languages is now interacting with Python. It is highly flexible, user friendly and object oriented high level programming language with dynamic semantics. It is compiled and interpreted both. Now when we talk about the dynamic syntax semantics, dynamic semantics means dynamically Python allocates the value to the variables. Earlier in C and C++ we need to assign the data type of a variable but here we do not need to do that. We only assign values and accordingly Python assign the type of the variable. So that is dynamic semantics. Now Python programs are platform independent. Normally the source code what we write with the programming language it may depend on operating system to operating system. Then this particular programming language Python is system independent means we are actually trying to say that it does not depend on any operating system whether it can be Windows operating system or whether it can be a Linux operating system it can run easily. Now what makes Python a very platform independent programming language? We can see Python uses PVM that is Python virtual machine to convert Python code to machine understandable code. Now here we need to understand as we are writing a particular program with a programming language that is the source code. Now we are talking about Python code. Now let us see what actually the Python code is. When we write any program with the help of Python programming language that converts by the Python compiler into the byte code and that byte code has the extension of .pyc that means it is compiled. Now .pyc file is not ready to 
execute the program. Here this dot .pyc file is further converted to the machine code or the executable code by the python virtual machine and this is the runtime engine of python which converts the bytecode into the executable file. That is the object file we are talking about. Now this bytecode whatever we are actually observing that python converts the source code into the bytecode this bytecode is very very important concept because this actually the system independent now python virtual machine pvm can run in any operating system and when bytecode is system independent then pvm converts that bytecode into the object code or the executable code then the python program gets executed so we can see that earlier what was happening in case of c and c++ that the source code whatever we are writing using the c and c++ programming language that is directly converted by the compiler to the machine code there was no intermediary file is generating so it was purely converting by the compiler to the machine code directly now in case of python it is little bit different we can see that this compiler whatever i was talking about this c and c++ directly converting the source code to the machine code and we get the output as per the programming logic now in case of python what is happening that the source code it is getting converted into the bytecode by the compiler then further this bytecode is converted to the running code or executable code by the python virtual machine and the library modules whatever required are included with this so i hope the concept is very much clear to all of the students that python is both its compiling as well as interpreting this python virtual machine interprets line by line the byte code that's when the program gets executed so it is both compiler and interpreting language now you can see we have already discussed pvm python virtual machine and the bytecode and the pyc the compiled file python file and also i have given the information about the machine code which is the low level binary ones and zeros which is only understandable by the computer and without the machine code the program cannot be executed and there are few concept also needs to be very clear that bytecode is a virtualized machine code that means it is unlike machine code for a real processor the bytecode actually it is for the virtual kind of processor i have already mentioned python virtual machine so it is a runtime engine so it is not platform dependent so you can see from here the plat uh, python becomes platform independent when it is converted to the byte code okay and whenever we write any python program it is stored as dot py extension that is the source code 
then it is converted to the bytecode with uh, with the help of compiler and the extension of the bytecode file is .pyc then it is further converted to the machine code with the python virtual machine and it interprets or navigate line by line of bytecode file and convert it into the object file which ultimately get executed. Now when a particular program runs that loaded into the RAM, random access memory, the primary memory and when it is loaded then only it executed. Now there are certain other memories as well which are contributing to the execution of any program. Number one that is stack which is very important also because this stack memory normally stores the temporary variables whatever we write within a program and during the execution these variables are called and created and called and when the program execution is over this variable will no, no, no longer exist in the memory. Now C and C++ this particular operation when is variable is no longer is required because after the program the variable if it is storing or occupying memory then the memory issue can be there. But if this particular operation means the releasing of the memory is done automatically then the memory can be released and memory can be prepared for the next execution of any other program. And this called garbage collection and python has an inbuilt characteristic of this garbage collection. So what happens? So whenever is any variable is created during the execution of program, then this particular variables may if it is temporary variables then it may not be required after the program execution. Then the memory can be released and python does it automatically. And there is another memory that is heap memory, it is also very important and it is used by the programming languages. It is normally a global variables and by default the global variables are stored in heap memory. It supports dynamic memory allocation. Now when dynamic memory allocation is conceptualize in case of programming languages that means whenever some kind of iteration of work means we are doing certain task repeatedly with a particular variable is involved in that operation and that particular variables also require some more memory allocation then the dynamic memory allocation can be done and the memory can be extended or a new variable memory can be allocated using the dynamic memory allocation. Now everything is python is an object why object whatever we see in python if it is a number or if it is a string if it is a list if it is a tuple if it is a dictionary if it is a set 
all these are data type of the python all these are represented by a class so we know the class can have the object and python is out and out a programming languages which is following the object oriented programming concept so that's why everything whatever we present or write that becomes an object so we can have the object file as well which actually helping in the execution of a programming file in python now an object allocation is very important and it contains the data and the functions data means what information we are going to store in that data and function how you are going to execute that particular logic using the data to get an output that is very important these two are very very important component of object in ob prog object oriented programming language the data and function are very important component now python also follows the programming language that is following the object oriented programming concept so when we talk about the data imperatively in object oriented programming concept the data accessibility concept comes in the mind means how we are going to accept or access those data accept means when we are going to or trying to store data in the variables which are in the object included in the object and access means that stored data how we can retrieve that is very important so we know in object oriented programming concept there are three access specifier that is private public and protected so when we talk about private that means data can only be accessed by that particular class protected protected data members can be accessible through the base class as well as through the inherited class and the public data member can be accessible by any class so we can see this accessibility option are also present in python as well as functions can also be accessible as per the accessibility so we can see the important information what we have covered till now that python is both following compilation as well as interpretation python converts the source code dot py file is converted to dot pyc that is the byte code and that dot pyc file is converted to the dot o that is object file and it gets executed by the python virtual machine and it is the stage of interpretation line by line then what we have learnt we have learnt also the data and the function access specifier of this and also we have learnt this data which actually stores into the memory that is primary memory we are talking about and importantly if it is a temporary variable it gets stored in the stack memory and if it is a frequently used variable it gets stored in the heap memory and this heap memory helps us in dynamic memory allocation 
and this memory suppose it temporary variables stack if after execution this particular memory gets released then the memory can be free for the next execu next execution of another program this is called a garbage collection and this actually happens automatically in python thank you students for your participation and if you have any query you can reach me with this email id thank you